been collecting her own poetry for decades. While growing up, Alice struggled with her schoolwork because of learning disabilities and dyslexia. Today, Alice is celebrating the release of her third published book, Walker's Web, Collections of a Fugitive. Please join me in welcoming Alice Renee. because I know I'm not supposed to be bringing up everybody else, but I'm the kind of person I'd like to be thankful for everything. For my friends coming out, my family coming out, and everything. So Christian is out there somewhere, and I know it. So will y'all join me in giving him a hand? Because he's 21 years old. He's good. Here. meditate so I can get my mind set because even though I'm the artist and I'm the author, it's not about me. It's about my purpose. First of all, I want to welcome all of you here and I want you to take note of this sign up here. It doesn't have half of the names of the people in the community has reached out to help us, to, to give me a hand, to spell a word over the phone because um, even though I was dyslexic, I still am. I have learning disability, but I'm hoping that people will notice the fact that even if with learning disabilities, it, it shouldn't stop. It should make you want to fight even just that much harder. Me, uh, I remember the, the first word I wanted to uh, spell, and it had me in tears. And it was a simple word that none of you would even think about most of you, somebody might be out there like I was. It was set. S E T. And even explaining it to you, it sometimes kind of gets to me. Because I remember the teacher that wanted to teach me and, and, and sit with me and work with me for over a year and a half on reading and writing. And I still can't tell you the words Michael Latt and Tasha, y'all gonna meet them later on. And they have been a great deal of help to me and trying to get something done. I guess I would like to say too, uh, I think everything is possible through God. I think that when you really want to do something, you don't let nothing hold you down because when you truly believe in something, and that's the power of faith, and you keep on going no matter what, no matter what's on your back, what things you can't do, I believe that all things are possible through Christ. So now you're gonna get to know Alice as the author. You're going to get to know Alice as the artist. I'm not going to hold anything back because I can't. You're going to read my book. And that kind of tells it all. Um, right now, I want to introduce, uh, I, well, I, wanted, I, I did want to show you this, but I wanted to let you know that the Kalamazoo Public Library has gone beyond. They gave us this place to, to, to come and then they also made sure that we got a lot of publicity. A lot of other people did their thing and, and helped us too. The, um, the Arts Council of Greater Kalamazoo, we got our first grant. And I thank my community and family for that. The hard, diligent work that my friends did, you know, that didn't have to do it. To me, those are my blessings from God when, when people step in. So uh, I want to now give you. Latasha Boy, go home. Welcome, everyone. I am elated to see you all here <laughs> on the eve of the book premiere of the Walker's Web Project. Uh, hence, Walker's Web Recollections of Fugitive Volume 1. It has been an endearing process as we've worked over on this project for over a year now. And I can truly say, I've seen my mother pour her heart and soul into everything that she has done thus far. 
and pray over every page. And it has been an honor to work with her. She's an honor artist in her own right. She has done poetry, theatrical works, and now she gives us her book. We're hoping to birth a series of works through different characters stemming for two other books that she has written. One named Blood and the other Father Like Son. Tonight you will be introduced to a character that's a little rough and grungy around the edges. His name is Garth. But the obstacles that he has to overcome to come up to the point where he is, I believe that the reader will be able to identify with why he came, came to the choices that he had to make and the realization of the circumstances that surround him. How you doing? I believe also that the purpose which my mother is to is to make changes in people's lives on how we handle life challenges. Because oftentimes we find ourselves entangled in wealth and not knowing who to reach out to or how to find that inner strength to come out of it. But each character in future series from book, book blood, we hope to bring and to show that the inspiring spirit that which indwells inside of us can emerge and become stronger and powerful. Like my mother said, she has overcome a lot and still faces challenges, but her faith keeps her strong. I'm a nurse, I have associates in the arts, and I'm a have a bachelor's in organizational management. But it is an honor to be able to work so close in the field of arts with my mother. Because I get hands-on training. <laughs> Sometimes much. <laughs> but um, it's very it's necessary. And I hope that we continue to support arts. Now, without further ado, I would like to welcome to you stage this evening. Not only a friend, a team member and a co-worker, but someone that means so much to us because he stayed with us through the whole struggle up until this point. His name is Ubgene Kerway. Ubgene Kerway, which means God's gift. And he has truly been a blessing unto us. For short, we will call him Michael. Now, without further ado, Michael. It set in the 1800s, 
but that shows it's, it remains relevant to today's society in the sense that the sins from Walker, from those generations back, keep on being repeated for generations to come. It's, it's like an ongoing cycle that just keeps repeating itself. And, and, and it's our hope that somehow we learn to you know, this one with all with the seeds and to break this up. I've known Miss Alice for a long time, and, 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 and I know a lot of people, you know, I can't, I can't go into talking about her too much because you already know she's probably already told you about herself a million times. And she'll go out of that when she gets on stage. But my hope is that when you get this, don't get it just because you know the Don't get it because you're invited here and feel obligated. Get it because you want to learn something. Because you want to be this. Because you want to support the arts. You want to support the local community. And, I, and, and, and it's my hope that when you take this week, you learn something. Something that stays with you, something you keep. Without, without any other drug, just I like to walk amongst the Christelles. I think we're ready sooner. <laughs> I'd like to bring you back to you. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Christelle Walker. I'm a You know, when you're going on this journey, you got a lot of friends that help you. I've had people come from a long distance and I'm so busy doing all this other stuff I forgot. They're so gracious enough to come on out tonight. I also uh, have a sister out here and this, if you read the paper, you know this event for me is very special and I'm dedicating it to my sister for the school. Can I give my sister a hand?
Thomas has done something that's incredibly courageous for any author, but as a black woman, especially in these times of friction and distrust. She's taken on writing about perhaps the most submerged and fearful moment thought between blacks and whites in this country. Throughout history, whenever you had slave risings, uprisings, and revolts, there always there was the terror of the masters that these revolts would happen. The idea of a revolt sounds very politically safe and sanitized. What you, the real terror was the idea that these understandably oppressed and angry black people would not only try to get rid of the shackles, but would retaliate and kill not only the master, but his own family, and the whole community, as much as he could get away with. That is a core fear that still works today, that undermines our ability to have honest, true, and deep conversations about our frictions, about our anger, about our desires to connect as a human family. So Alice's book here, this is the first volume in the whole series. Her second book was called Blood, which was what I call the mother ground for all these stories that she's going to be putting in book form. The Walker's Web series, and we're looking at volume one, Recollections of the Future, is like one major branch of all the stories she wants to tell in this great saga. And it takes a different kind of courage, not to be political or nicey nice. She gets into the being of God. We don't get that perspective too often in historical tales of what it, what it took to make a young boy turn out the way he did. And as she puts in her intro, his contaminated spirit affects generations to come. There's a lot of stuff going on here. This is just the beginning. So we want you to taste. You hear about Alice's cooking class, I'm concerned. But taste a little piece of what's going on in this book. And we hope that in a couple of months, we're going to be having another event at the Powell Library where all of us who've been reading about this can have a deeper conversation. And hopefully, we find a way that we deal with our tragic human history in this country and find a better future. Now, walk this way. Gentlemen, I greet you here on the banks of the James River in the year of our Lord, 1712. First, I shall thank you, the gentlemen of the colony of Virginia, for inviting me here. I'm here to help 
you solve some of your problems with slaves. Your invitation reached me on my modest plantation in the West Indies, where I have experimented with some of the newest and yet oldest methods of controlling of slaves. Ancient Rome would envy us if my program were implemented. As I sail south on our boat down the James River, named for our illustrious king, whose version of the Bible we cherish, I saw enough to know that your problem is not unique. While Rome used cords of wood as crosses for standing human bodies along its highways in great numbers, you are here using a tree and a rope on a cable. I caught the width of a dead slave hanging from a tree a couple of miles down. You are not only <coughs> losing a valuable stock, you are having uprisings. The slaves are running away. The crops are sometimes <coughs> left in the fields, long for maximum profit. You suffer occasional fires and your animals are killed. You know, you know your problems. I do not need to enumerate. I'm not here to enumerate your problems. I'm here to introduce you to a method of solving them. I have here in my bag a foolproof method for the controlling of your black slave. I guarantee every one of you that if installed correctly, they will control the slaves for at least 300 years. My method is simple. Any member of your family or your overseer can use it. I have outlined a number of differences among the slaves. I take these differences and make them better. I use fear, envy, and distrust for control purposes. Take this simple little list of differences and think about them. At the top of my list is eight, but it is only there because it begins with an A. Next is color or shade. There is also intelligence, size, sex, size of plantation, status on plantation, attitude of owners, whether the slave live in the back on the hill, east, west. North, South, have fine hair, or coarse hair, or as tall or short. Now, that you have a list of differences, I shall give you an outline of action, but before that, let me assure you that this trust is stronger than trust. And envy is stronger than adulation, respect, or admiration. Don't forget. Old black male against the young black male. And the young black male against the old black male. 
you must be. The dark skin slaves against the light skin slaves in the light versus the dark. You must use the female versus the male and the male versus the female. You must also have your wife, family, and overseers distrust all blacks. But the slaves must trust and depend on us. They must love, respect, and trust only us. Gentlemen, these kits are your keys to control. Use them. Have your wives and children use them. Never miss an opportunity. If used intensely for one year, the slaves themselves will remain perpetually distrustful of after the ratification of the 13th Amendment, slavery ended. However, the side effects of slavery still linger on into the lives of many blacks in America today. What I'm asking for is a change. The change I'm asking for is probably the biggest battle one will ever have to fight. And that's a battle against your more self. I'd like to read you my introduction to Walker's Web in its entirety. And I have not memorized it, but I wrote a whole book to memorize it all. It all had to go somewhere. So we're going to go like this. Legally, after the ratification of the 13th Amendment in December of 1865, slavery ended. <coughs> However, its effect continued to linger on in the, lives of many, uh, um, uh, in the lives of a majority of blacks in America. Descendants of slavery have yet to sit and contemplate over the complex effects left upon generations of slaves and have distanced themselves from the past. Black America no longer wants to hear about the pain and devastation put on a bunch of people out of Africa. In the same vein, white America, in the same vein, white America does not want to acknowledge nor address the damage caused, which over time has continued to be left recklessly unattended. With all the information and opportunities available, it is astonishingly that we as blacks especially if considered poor, remain limited in our knowledge. Our ability to reach for transformation in order to obtain better job skills is masked by our hopelessness. Many of us settle for a job versus career. Due to past mistreatment, lack of education, financial stability, and an unfair justice system, while it is, it, it is, while it is many of our behaviors that have us in prison, when it comes to appropriate sentencing, the prejustice built within the system, I feel, is unfair. Many of us surrender to addictions. We, in most part, would rather suffocate in an addiction, be it, in se be it sexual or greed, than to deal with the problems at hand. In this century, reparation for the black race in America is inconceivable, and for the government, it is definitely unimaginable. Statistics show that eight black males compared to one white are at risk of being in prison, and five to one when compared to his facts. It is sad that we continue to lead the way in many destructive behaviors. Studies show if a black versus a white commits the same crime, the black person is more likely to be given a harsher sentence as compared to a white. Only approximately 7% of Americans are black in America. That's the issue from the justice system, of uh, the uh, Department of Justice. So bear with me while I read their truth. Approximately 7% of the American population is African American. But we make up 46% of the total 200 and 0.1 million inmates in prison today. That's what I write. Thank you. Um, 
I'm, I'm kind of floored with those words. And I'm going to bring it to my point. And I feel like um, when I wrote, wrote about Walker's Web, I wrote about a character that is stuck and doesn't want to progress into another era. I don't want to know, I don't, I don't, not want to know, I don't know if it's just the way he was raised, the outside influence, the opportunities that he did have and didn't take. See, Garvey ain't nobody big. Most slaves want to look at him as big. Garvey's your worst nightmare. I'm hoping when you read this book, you'll be saying, I don't want to be a Garvey, because Garvey ain't nothing nice. We have a, a, a reader here today, Mr. Where did I put him at? All right, I got you now. I just got lost. That, that part when I read it, it hurts. That's why I write. And I guess you can tell it's got me kind of stumbling over myself right now. But I want to give you our reader for the night, Mr. Shamar, my nephew. Hi, everybody. I'm Shamar Wood. I'll be reading Forever Excellent Child's Mind on page 59 of Walker's Web. Now I'd like to get him to a place where he has just committed murder. He's on the run and fearful for his life. Man, I gave myself the biggest start a young boy could get by running like the wind. I ran like him from the only place I'd ever known. Clothes, trench coat, Headed to the deepest parts of the swamp plants, where even master dare not go. Didn't care about gays, snakes, nor swamp rocks. It'd be pitch black. I should have fell a few times, but got right on up and kept running. As I ran, the night seemed like it had no end. I know that by morning, God could have all the lawmen and slave catches on my trail. Fear and nice times made me run with everything I had. I couldn't let myself get tired. After a while, it seemed like I'd be running to nowhere. Would anything would be better than what I had just left behind. For sure. Fear and nice. <laughs> After a while, it seemed like I'd be running to nowhere. Would anything would be better than what I had just left behind. For sure. Very swamp plan, I swore it never to be the only place I had to go. I didn't want to die with a rope around my neck. I suffocated like little colored children did when the water went up their nose. Thought of that alone, but kept me going. Shoot, I've been mean, thinking about freedom right there and all this. Now, I would like to take you to a part where he's older now, he's being buried alive. He's watching his life unfold. They say that just before dawn, all hell breaks out. And just before death, you sums up your whole life. What a hell of a life. Don't dare judge me, you so called decent, simple bastards. <coughs> you think you know me? <coughs> hell, I don't even know myself. Shoot, I've seen in the eyes of any, many of you folks that see me so generous and righteous spirits. I know your minds be provoked. Appalled the thoughts of contempt when you think of a man like me. Oh, I am that ruthless, cold-hearted son of a bitch. You have to reach deep inside of and give a little heart to find any compassion for them. What I've done stuns and leaves even me speechless. My story, my life, or at least all I can remember, keeps approaching. And it's definitely coming soon. All I see by now in my mind's eye be a very monkey place. Interconnected channels where true roots emerge from the bodies uncovered, bodies of water. Fighting the Interwoven wilds, decorated green, woods surrounded by more woods. The swamp be home to many, the swamp be home to many slimy critters. Moving fast, moving slow. Gators and bugs ready to eat you alive. Snakes ain't to swallow you whole or drag you to your death. Rats as big as dogs. All sorts of slimy things that was over the swamp. Both believe in black magic. Call the voodoo. A lower character driving in the backwoods of Louisiana, where I'd be born and raised on a plantation, kept by the poorest of whites. Living be not easy for no damn body.
wanted to give you something special tonight, and, and I wanted um, you to pick a story. Uh, I don't rehearse them all, but um, I wanted to give you a chance to pick a story. And um, this is our board. I didn't put all the labels in here, but I want to pick somebody in the audience that I don't know <laughs> and ask them to um, pick a story, and we're going to read that story to you, and then I'm going to read my <coughs> favorite story to you before we take our box. Um, let me see. I love you all. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, love you all. Biggest story. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy. All right. I, always, I, I tried to take some of them off that I, I didn't want y'all to really ask me about that. I don't read the word. <laughs> I, I say this as a mature book because we talked about some issues that are deep. And when Michael and them, the people that work for me, they, 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 they tell you, um, take something else out of this book. I try to be the best story. Everybody likes that early American gangster. They like the American gangster. That's what kids are into nowadays. So I'm giving you a gangster, but I don't really think you want to be like him. He's nothing nice. At least I'm hoping you don't want to be like him. If you do, let me know so I can stay away from him. <laughs> Y'all need to stay by no more. If you like him too, stay away from him too. Uh, okay, I'm fine with you. Yes, um, I've been told don't make no excuses about my reading and um, to carry on like that. But I think that I have to talk to the people out there that are like me. Sometimes you will stumble over the words, but there's a grace of others. And when you don't allow other people what they feel or think, and you need your creative mind and your own ability, and continue on. Great things happen. Sometimes smell, smells in the night air bring back memories of swamps. Memory I, memories I can never seem to escape. Every now and then, when I have to go out to the barn or grab a rope, it makes me remember what Master and his fat ass brothers did to my dad. Master didn't tell my daddy. So unlike a lot of the neighbor children on the plantation, my daddy lived in the shack with me, my sister Nay, and mom. Many of my dreams come with nightmares of that night that many of my dreams come with nightmares of that one night when Master forced my little sister Nay, Mom and me, watch them humiliate my daddy. Daddy be a good man. I remember my daddy not begging for his life, but for mama's screaming, please, master, please, stop, stop, please let my wife go with just before they hung. So much time has passed and barely make out my daddy's face no more. Heaven's door. 
There I be waiting on the rope, waiting for light to come. Hadn't slept all night. The sun appeared saddled on the edge of the sky, partially hidden in the warmth of the earth. It'd be just minutes away from reaching the heavens. I watched the sky turn slowly toward the or toward the orange punch. As it, I didn't say that right. I watched the skies turn slowly toward an orange punk as it offered the feeling of total peace. My thinking began to focus on the grave of black men, too many boys' fathers never being able to return back to see the women and children that they cared for. I remember those taken out to the deep bush and shot so their souls could Guard, senseless spoils. Though all of this comes to mind, I'd rather be out here free, where equality and justice awaits the cost of freedom. Right now, usually when you have a book premiere, you're standing at this podium, and people are asking you questions, and you're asking them questions, and so then you go from there. So right now, I just want any. I'll take up three questions. I have a young man in the back. Go ahead, sir. Why did I write it? I'm glad you asked that, because I made him skip a whole slide. That's how nervous I am. And you got a lot of guts to sit there and ask that question. I'm going to tell you how, how, how I was inspired to write this story. When I was a little girl, we used to go uh, visit my kin folks out of town. And, you know, children, when they get together, they, that's what I'm saying, outside influence, you never know what's going on. Children used to get together and they tell these stories. They knew we wasn't from their little town, so they tried to scare us. I would like to say they scared the hell out of me. And what they did was they told me about a story about a man that was murdered, and murdered by his own, and then buried alive upon his front steps. That story haunted me for years, just never went away. Because they told me it was true, and I kind of like it. And I took it that way, because I wasn't but probably about five or six. So when you told it to me, I'm, I'm the kind of child that don't look at scary movies, I'm afraid of. I don't look at anything haunting and don't want to see too much blood. When we went through this book, in, in one part, um, I had to write about blood. And when I, I started writing about it, I ended it. I ended it real swift without the look. And then somebody was reading and said, oh, this is a really good look, but I knew what they were going to say. I knew it. Because I knew I, where I stopped at. I knew where I didn't want to go. But the reason I didn't want to go there because as I write, I become a character. I become the woman that is, and she ain't in this book, I'm just giving it, so then you ain't trying to do it. But if a woman was suffocating that child, I become her. And so in order to do that, you have to blank out your mind, and for a second, those were the phone calls that I made to people. Those were the calls when I reached out to people. Because I don't like to take my mind in the dark. But sometimes, in order to make a change and a difference, you got to take your mind to the dark. I want to tell you my purpose and my reason. I'm glad you asked that question. This book is not about me. It's about the pain and devastation I see that I want to reach out to, like so many of you, to make a difference and change people's lives. And, and it's hard. I, I look at uh, the young people getting in trouble, and they seem not to get it. And every time I hear about one going away, or one getting pregnant, because I was a teenage month, or, or somebody killing somebody else, you know, that's two families lost. Because when that child goes to prison, that breaks that heart. And when that other one takes that life, it breaks that heart. And when another one dies, it takes that heart and it takes another heart. So when I write, I'm writing for a reason. 
I have a purpose. My purpose is to create stories, to cre create programs that are fuel and ignite a fire that brings about a change in the way people behave, think, and act. I hope to, to what's that word? Because I got to speak about to revoke you. Or, uh, somebody said it. You provoke. There you go. I see that's what you do. You rely on the people that love you most, your community, because they've been here for you. At this time, let's just take a moment of silence for all those that came before us and all those that come before us and all those that are sitting out there today that want to make a difference. This is black history. Black history is not just about black people. Black history is about us all. I'll give you my cast. Can my cast come up and take this about 